that uh, tragedy over the weekend. Uh, we will Let's give you an opportunity in. to ask those questions, uh, as well as have an opportunity to interview uh, individuals one on one if you need to after. Please see me for those requests, and I'll try to coordinate th that for you. And uh, again, we appreciate you being here, and I'd like to introduce Santa Barbara County Sheriff Bill Brown. Thank you, Lieutenant Rainey. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen of the press, for being here today. Uh, before I begin my remarks, I just would like to acknowledge our local elected officials who have come to show their support today. We are joined by Congressman Salud Carbajal, Senator Hannabeth Jackson, Assemblymember Monique Lamone, and two of our county supervisors from the second district. We have Supervisor Greg Hart and from the 3rd District, Supervisor Joan Hartman. So I'm going to give you a uh, quick overview of the incident and what occurred uh, early today. I'm going to then uh, hand it off to Coast Guard Captain who is going to talk about the rescue effort that uh, went underway this morning. Uh, that will be followed by uh, some remarks from our fire chief to talk about the Santa Barbara and Ventura County fire response to the incident. Our Santa Barbara County District Attorney will have some uh, comments for you, as will Assistant Chief Ryan Smith from the Office of Emergency Services, and then uh, Suzanne Grimacy will talk about what we're doing for victims' families. Um, The incident today uh, began at uh, approximately 3.30 a.m. The Coast Guard sector in Los Angeles received a mayday call uh, that was from a fully engulfed 75-foot commercial diving vessel that was off the coast of Santa Cruz Island. Crews from the U.S. Coast Guard, the uh, Ventura County Fire Department and the uh, Vessel Assist Organization responded. The Coast Guard uh, launched aircraft as well as boats and uh, located a vessel that was fully involved in flames in the Platts Harbor area on the north side of Santa Cruz Island. The crews were actively fighting the fire uh, when the vessel began to sink at approximately 7.20 a.m. this morning. 39 souls were reported to be on board that vessel when it left Santa Barbara. Five victims were subsequently rescued uh, and uh, during the initial response and have been transported uh, to Ventura, were transported to Ventura Harbor. This particular dive trip that the boat was on was a three-day trip uh, that began August the 31st. It was scheduled to end tomorrow morning. Uh, it was advertised as a Labor Day weekend North Channel Islands dive trip. The uh, boat was scheduled to depart Santa Barbara Harbor at 4 a.m. on Saturday the 31st and return on Monday the 2nd, as I say, in the morning. The dive company chartered the boat and the crew from Truth Aquatics, a Santa Barbara Harbor-based operation that has been in existence since 1974. Uh, so far, the, uh, in Santa Barbara, I am the coroner as well as the sheriff, so our coroner's bureau has been involved in this uh, event because four victims have been recovered thus far uh, as deceased. They have been transported to our coroner's bureau. We can only identify them at this point as two adult males and two adult females. Rescue and recovery efforts on the scene have located an additional four victims on the ocean floor in close proximity to the vessel. And we have dive teams that are in the water as we speak that are working to attempt a recovery of their remains. But the, the boat remains uh, unstable, and I'm not sure when we're going to be able to recover uh, those bodies as well as any more that may be within the vessel. The Coroner's Bureau is responsible for identifying the victims, for notifying the next of kin, and for determining the cause and manner of death. We have asked for assistance due to the sizable nature of this incident and have received support from the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office and from the Sacramento County Coroner's Office 
as well. The four victims that we have recovered as of now will need to be identified through DNA, and that may take some time. The condition of the remains that are recovered subsequently will determine the speed at which we are able to identify any of the victims. Our hearts go out to the families of the victims of this terrible tragedy. Uh, we understand the tremendous burden that they are under right now as they wait to determine exactly what happened and what uh, condition and situation their loved ones are in. Uh, we will be working diligently to try to get them as much information as possible as soon as possible. We've also set up a family assistance center which is designed to uh, provide uh, specialized assistance to family members of uh, victims of this tragedy. Um, I am going to now turn this uh, over to Captain Monica Rochester of the United States Coast Guard, uh, Los Angeles sector, and she will uh, give you a briefing on the rescue effort that uh, was undertaken this morning. Can you tell us your name and message? Yeah, my name is Sheriff Bill Brown. Common spelling. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Captain Monica Rochester, Captain of the Port for Coast Guard Sector Los Angeles, Long Beach. We have been fully involved uh, with this incident since, zero th since 3 30 a.m. Uh, we continue to have Coast Guard vessels uh, continue our search and rescue efforts um, along the shorelines of Santa Cruz Island. Uh, we also have our Coast Guard aircraft that is also engaged in providing cover to ensure uh, that we have uh, the full swath or full breadth of the area to be, um, to be uh, searched. Uh, we've also provided a safety zone, which is approximately a mile, which provides uh, safety to the responders um, so that we don't have interference from other vessel traffic or any other uh, incursion into the area where the incident has occurred. Additionally, we have also established a 3,000-foot ceiling uh, for a temporary flight restriction. So again, this is all to protect the, the first responders. This isn't a, a day that we wanted to wake up to for Labor Day, and it's a very tragic event. Um, and we will search uh, all the way through the night into the morning, but I think we all should be prepared um, to move into um, the, the worst outcome. But um, those are our efforts right now, and they will continue through the night and into the morning. Thank you. Good afternoon. Mark Hartwig, H-A-R-T-W-I-G. I'm the county fire chief and county fire warden for the county of Santa Barbara. I want to start by telling you that the hearts of this uh, community are heavy. Uh, as the families deal with this. For uh, representing those uh, in the water and on the ground and those that are supporting this incident uh, today and into the future, um, we, are, uh, we are saddened um, with the families and, and those that are close to the, the folks in, um, affected by this tragedy. From the fire side, um, we were, uh, that, uh, shortly after the May Day, uh, the uh, uh, PSAP in Ventura County was notified by the post Coast Guard. That initiated an immediate response, as you uh, believe heard this morning from Ventura County Fire Department out of Oxnard. They uh, re responded with two fire boats. Uh, upon arrival, arrival at the scene of the incident, they uh, encountered a fully involved wooden uh, vessel uh, in the waters off of Santa Cruz Island. They began to extinguish the flames uh, and uh, then notified the county fire department here in uh, Santa Barbara. We continue, the county fire department continues today. We will offer our uh, expertise uh, in investigations on cause and origin along with the team from the sheriff, uh, uh, Sheriff Bill Brown's office, and then we'll also provide incident support uh, uh, throughout this uh, incident. Thank you. My name is Joyce Dudley, D-U-D-L-E-Y. I'm the District Attorney of Santa Barbara County. I represent the people of Santa Barbara County. And on behalf of the people of Santa Barbara County, 
I want them to understand and everyone to understand how much we understand what everyone is suffering from as a result of this. People all over the world, and we appreciate those thoughts. And our primary concern are the victims and their loved ones. And we will continue to address their concerns as quickly as we can. Santa Barbara County shares jurisdiction over these waterways and the area around uh, Santa Cruz Island with the U.S. Attorney. I've been speaking with the U.S. Attorney Nick Hanna since this morning. We will continue to communicate with each other constantly and to address any jurisdictional concerns, monitor the investigation, and help in any way we can. Again, to those who are suffering as a result of this tragedy, you have our support and our love. Ryan Smith, Assistant Chief, Governor's Office of Emergency Services, Law Enforcement Branch. On behalf of the Governor's Office of Emergency Services, we send our condolences to the victims and the families. Please know the thoughts of our entire state are with you during this tragic incident. Early this morning, the state's California Master Mutual Aid Plan was activated, resulting in multiple law enforcement, search and rescue, and coroner's resources being immediately dispatched to Santa Barbara to assist with the local and federal resources actively engaged in this incident. As this incident continues, we remain committed to ongoing collaboration with our local, state, and federal resources to respond to this tragic incident and fully support them in their ongoing efforts. This is a very complex, tragic, and sensitive incident requiring various resources and specialized training. Highly trained public safety personnel from throughout the state are on scene and engaged with our local partners and will remain committed throughout the response as well as into recovery operations. And I just want to reiterate our thoughts and prayers for the victims of this tragic incident, their families, and the Santa Barbara community as a whole. Good afternoon. My name is Suzanne Grimacy. I work with the County of Santa Barbara, the Department of Behavioral Wellness. Today is Labor Day. I know people probably had many plans ranging from working or spending time with family and friends. I'm sure nobody planned to have their day spent the way it is now and waking up to the news that we received. We have a family assistance center that is set up at Warren Hall at Earl Warren Showground. The family assistance center will be open through 9 p.m. tonight, open again at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We plan to stay open through Thursday, but really to stay open as long as is needed. The Assistance Center is a place where family, friends, loved ones, community, a place where people can come to get information, to get support, to get mental health counseling, and to get resources. The center is staffed by the county's Department of Behavioral Wellness for mental health counseling, we have clergy, chaplain, Red Cross, Hospice of Santa Barbara, Sheriff's Department, Fire, and others working together as a team. In addition, the county has a public information line that can be called. That number is 833-688-5555. So we'll carry on together as we get more information and learn new findings as the days progress. Hope that you will take care of yourself well and take care of others. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne, and thank all of our speakers. Uh, we now uh, be in a position to take some questions from you. Let me, let me get him first. Well, we're always hopeful that there would be more survivors found, and the search and rescue operation continues today and will through tomorrow morning, uh, doing everything that we can uh, to try to see if anyone could have survived this. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Yeah, I, I don't know that there is a black box on a vessel like this, and uh, I, I couldn't answer that question for you. Correct. Tomorrow morning it was supposed to end. Tuesday morning. Uh, 
Um, the initial reports that were received in the May Day were that the fire was underway. There were no initial reports of an explosion. There have been several media reports about uh, potential for an explosion or explosions. Um, that could be, it's just speculation, but obviously that could be uh, scuba tanks or, or uh, propane tanks or other things that could be blown up in the fire. But there's nothing that would, in, in the initial broadcast from the vessel that indicated that there was an initial explosion. We don't know that at this point. I, you know, and I think it's, you have to understand, this is probably the worst case scenario you could possibly have. You have a vessel that's on the open sea that is in the middle of the night. I mean, at 3.30 in the morning, um, fire is the scourge of any uh, ship. And, uh, you know, the vessel, this, you know, if not everybody, most everybody was asleep at this time. The, the, the majority of the people were the passengers on the ship. And the sleeping compartment was on the bottom deck of the ship, so they would have been sound asleep when this fire started. So you can imagine that, of all scenarios, to be in a remote location, have a fire that occurs, have limited, if any, firefighting capabilities that could address that, and then to have all of a sudden a fire that spread very, very rapidly, uh, you couldn't ask for a worse situation. Yeah, could you repeat that question? Yeah, I know that I, I can't tell you exactly how much has been searched, and I don't know if Captain Rochester can, can address that, but certainly the island itself, the, the coastline has been checked. I don't have the, uh, the actual specific uh, length or uh, amount, but what I can tell you is that we continue the search around the island itself, as well as um, uh, the water currents have indicated uh, that moving to the west. So we will concentrate our effort also to the west as well. Captain, do boats, have, do boats like that, is there a protocol for escape hatches for below decks uh, people on boats of that particular design? Uh, usually that design is required to have an emergency escape hatch. And what does that usually involve? What kind of escape hatch? Uh, it's usually... Um, Leads, you, leads the individuals out onto the main deck from their, from what we would call their accommodation spaces, their sleeping quarters. So do you know if there was one there, was it blocked, was it uh, I don't have that information. Uh, I'm sorry, could you repeat your question? Um, has, the, has the crew spoken to investigators? Have they said if they had any efforts themselves? Uh, the crew, uh, the crew that was interviewed um, today by, um, Santa Barbara sheriffs, as well as um, some Coast Guard investigators, but I, I don't have the knowledge of, of what was discussed. Was it 33 people or 34 people? Okay, let's clarify that. It was a total of 39 people on board, six of which were crew, and 33 were passengers. And only five, and only five passengers? Where were they on? Whoa, whoa, whoa. One question at a time, please. So it's a total of 39 people on board. Of that are six crew members and 33 passengers. That is unaccounted for. That is correct. Yes, there were. I, I, I can't speak to that. The investigation is ongoing. So the Coast Guard Communications Center uh, explained to me that when the call came in, the vessel was already totally engulfed in flames. That's exactly how it was relayed to us. No, I, I don't have any of that information. Excuse me, say that again. So the boat has sank, and now it's inverted, and it's on the seabed. It's on the floor in approximately 60, 62 feet of water. Excuse me. Excuse uh, vessel is inspected annually by the Coast Guard. Have you had a chance to look at the vessel operator's record? Have they had violations? They have been in full compliance with, with regulatory requirements. Hold on just a second. We had someone behind you that was trying to ask a question. 
I, I don't have that information. Um, per, that will come out probably through an, an investigation. The Coast Guard itself will launch what we call a formal Marine uh, inquir Board of Inquiry. So there will be a team of Coast Guard folks that will come out and, and commence that process. I'm sorry, say again? We do have a list of passengers. Uh, right now, we're working on the next uh, next of kin notifications, identification. The sheriff, uh, sheriff Bar uh, Santa Barbara Sheriff Office, has the lead on that. So, I I, I don't have that have that answer, and and I'm going to go ahead and uh, relinquish my opportunity for somebody else to speak on behalf of this incident. I I, I don't have that information, but we certainly you know we can if you want to. Um, meet with our public affairs folks and uh, we will certainly provide that information to you as best as we can thank you very much the question was is the vessel going to stay at its location or will it be towed in we're under uh, discussion right now as to how that's going to be handled and what condition the vessel is in if it could be towed without breaking apart and whether it should be examined on site versus brought onto shore so that'll be something that the experts will be dealing with and making recommendations for as we go forward. We don't have a location for that yet. So it was a group, it was a build as a, uh, as a Labor Day uh, uh, trip. Um, I, I, I don't believe that they were all from one group. I think there were people from all around Southern California and perhaps further. Uh, who are dive enthusiasts who, uh, you know, just got on this boat, much like you would get on a fishing boat where you'd have a few uh, people that you might know, but the rest of the people you wouldn't know, and it's that type of uh, operation. I have not heard that. So. The uh, question is, was there firefighting equipment on board? There would have to be firefighting equipment on board to pass the Coast Guard inspection. So. We have, uh, at this point, there's only uh, four people have actually been recovered. Four more have been spotted or seen on the ocean floor, and the remaining 31 people are still missing at this point. Okay, one at a time, please. Yes, this, is, this investigation is a, a joint investigation between uh, local, state, and federal agencies that all have... Um, jurisdiction and varying interests within this uh, investigation. So, in other words, you have the sheriff's office, uh, you have which which handles the coroner's uh, 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 matters, as I indicated before. You also have the state uh, office of emergency services that responds to disasters and, and major emergencies like this. You have the federal national uh, transportation safety bureau and other federal investigative agencies that will be in support of that. Um, the Coast Guard has an investigative arm, the Coast Guard Investigative Service. So there's a number of different agencies that will be involved in this investigation. I don't have that information, Nick. Uh, the question was what has the crew uh, relayed or conveyed? The only information that I've got is that we do have some statements from them that the investigators are looking at. Uh, we also have the um, the gist of what the initial Mayday call was. Uh, other than that, we don't have any, any details at this point. The boat is unstable. What it has to be done for allow uh, rescue divers to go inside the vessel? Yeah, that, I, I don't know that I can answer that. question is, if the boat's unstable, what has to be done before rescue divers can go down there? It's, it's only unstable from the standpoint that it's upside down in relatively shallow water with receding tides uh, that, that are moving it around, essentially. So at some point, they're going to have to make a determination of when the best time is to actually uh, either refloat that vessel and attempt uh, to recover anyone who may be inside or to uh, try to make the recovery while it's still on the uh, ocean floor. Well, correct. The five, there's the four, just to clarify, the four, the, we have four actual bodies that have been delivered to our coroner's bureau. The other four who have been identified as deceased are still on the ocean floor at the vessel site. 
and uh, the remaining 30, uh, the remaining, yeah, five alive. So yeah, you look at uh, the remaining, the remaining 26 people would be uh, still missing at this stage. Yeah, I don't. I don't have the age ranges. It's a mixture of men and women and crew and passengers. That's all I know at this point. Don't know that. All right, going to take two more questions here. So, burning questions in the back. So, the salvage operation to get the the vessel refloated and uh, and examined is one that obviously calls for a tremendous amount of expertise. Uh, that's one that will be uh, required. And then there's also a concern for whatever fuel may be left in the vessel in terms of uh, a hazardous uh, leak type uh, to contain the, the fuel that may be in any other hazardous materials that may be in the vessel as well. That I, I don't have that information at, at all. So. Yeah, we have that. That is not information that's made its way to us. Well, there's a, an investigation to determine if there was any criminal activity, but we have no reason to suspect that there was at this point. But we are going to make sure that that's not the case. So uh, that's why we'll be conducting it. Don't have that information for you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.